Hi guys, I am Lauren and welcome back to my channel today. Today, today I'm going to try something a little different and I'm going to be giving you guys my fall recommendations. So, first off, book-wise, we have An Ember in the Ashes by Sabato here. This book is very, very fall-like. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the environment, but maybe it's the cover. It's very, you know, Ember in the ashes -y. That wasn't helpful. We'll also say, too, that towards the fall, I tend to stay away from the really dark stuff and go more towards paranormal and romance and a little bit more lighthearted, especially because it's holiday season. Holiday is a little hard for me, so... Plus, I just, there's just something about sitting on my patio in the fall weather while the wind's blowing or wrapped in my blanket with my Kindle or my book in a hot toddy and just reading something that's just like, I don't know, I just really like that time for reading paranormal stuff. I don't know. But The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon is also very, it's a good book to read in the fall. Um, it is a dystopian, it is also a good time for dystopians for me just because the weather's never usually like... Weather well, usually always cold in dystopians for some reason, so I tend to just always start liking to read a lot of them in the fall. Then I will say the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, as well as Strength. The Dreamer's Fall is also a really good time for fantasy. Like, none of these, well, this one isn't particularly dark. This one is not, but the sequel, the second book in this trilogy, in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy is. But these two, it's just something about the magic. It's just fall starts off like that magic season. So this is a really good time for fantasies for me as well. So I particularly like um, just not this dark fantasy. Mm -hmm. So Strange Dreamer, I read this in like March or something. But this one, if I reread it, it'll definitely be this fall out of my patio with a blanket. That would be fabulous. As well as the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. Then the last of my fantasy wrecks I have for the fall is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I have started this book already and I'm glad I waited until now to start it because fall is an excellent time for this. Plus, I mean, look, look at, look at the cover. You can't tell me that's not a good book for fall. I'm squinting because I don't have my glasses on. You can't tell me this is not a good book for fall. D look at it. It looks like fall. Then we are getting more towards my adult paranormal, urban fantasy, and romance, which I love, love, love to read in fall. Now, this one is a stand-in for a book I do not have a hard copy of. It is Lover Awakened by J.R. Ward. It is the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, of which there are a lot right now. But it is a urban fantasy slash paranormal romance series in which the gentlemen in this book, the Black Dagger Brotherhood, are vampires so to speak but they're a different take on vampires and not just like traditionally blood-sucking vampires and it is adult so the love scenes and romance in this book these books are adult and they do have some th darker themes so the only thing that i'll say that is kitschy about these series is the names of the brothers they're not actual brothers, they're more like brothers in arms type of deal. So they all have names like Wrath and Vicious, Pain, Torment, Sadist, but they're spelled uniquely. So like Zadist is spelled Z-S-A-D-I-S-T. Wrath is the only one that's spelled traditionally. Pain is P-A-Y-N-E. Vicious is V-I-S-H-O-U-S. -S. Like Torment is T-H-O-R-M-E-N-T that kind of a thing. The names are traditional for them. It's a cultural thing. But a lot of them, almost all of them, because they are centuries old, have these really dark histories. So Zadis is one of my favorite because Zadis is like the most standoffish out of all of the brothers and he also is the most tormented like in his mind he has one of the darker backstories but i love him so much because he just like sees himself as being unclean and unworthy of love for the person that he's fallen for because she's so like clean and pure and perfect and he just kind of sees himself as unworthy so he holds back a lot and you kind of see the beginning of his story and uh, the stories prior but in this book is when she finds out why he thinks they can't be together we get to look into his backstory and there's just all these tragic things and he's almost like childlike like an abused child in the way that he just really believes he doesn't deserve to be loved and he doesn't deserve her love specifically and it's just heart-wrenching and 
I just he's my favorite I love him so much because he's also one of those people like when he does allow himself to love he loves fiercely and don't don't touch his woman or he's just wrecking everything everything and everybody so if you have not checked out J.R. Ward's Black Dagger Brotherhood series you really need to do that all of the books have one overarching plot line of course kind of like a lot of very heavy paranormal romance series like heavy as in like long they all tend to do if you read them out of order you'll be a little confused as far as that but if you just read them for the romance it really doesn't matter what order you read them in because oh my god this one specifically this isn't it this is a companion novel like I love this series so much it even it came with an insider's guide to all of them but traditionally the covers look like this and they're all different like red blue gold green um yeah but i love these a lot as you can see i have a lot of them and i have been looking and looking in the thrift stores for one of zadist's story i had it on kindle but i just need in hardback he is my favorite i love him he's my baby you can't call him a cinema world. he's like the adult darker adult version of kaz Brecker like his backstory, but his backstory is even more tragic. I will say the Mercy Thompson series by Patricia Briggs. This is another urban fantasy series. This one features werewolves and vampires and it has different cultures in it, which I really like. Mercy Thompson is a coyote shifter, a Native American coyote walker, she's called. Um, she is the only one of her kind that she knows of. She basically lives in the Tri-Cities area next door to Adam Hoffman, who is a, God, he's a couple hundred years old, I think, or he's over a hundred year old um, werewolf and his pack. She used to live with another werewolf pack. It's a long story, but she moved next door to Adam at the behest of her adoptive father, who is like the alpha of all of the alphas. And he's more or less like, I'll let you go live, you know, on your own, but you gotta go stay in this area and then he calls Adam and help uh, tells Adam he needs to look out for Mercy. So there is in the first book we really don't get introduced to all the other like the fae and the vampires and you get an overview but it kind of more so focuses on werewolves and introducing you to the werewolves and how they are created in this particular universe and um, Mercy's background story. So of course it is paranormal romance as well as urban fantasy but what I really like about these is that once the main couple like gets together in these books they stay together throughout the entire series and you get to kind of see them take on stuff together and there is no how do I want to say this like there's a slow burn but when they get together it's so totally worth it because it's not like it's a slow burn and then they it, like a love triangle later and they're back and forth and then they just switch love interests all the time no it's a slow burn and there's like a little bit of a love triangle like do I want you or you but once I make that decision concrete and I love that about adult um paranormal romance series because I really hate in these um YA series this back and forth and these love triangles and back and forth and another love triangle in the course of one series one character will have like 17 love interests like, stop so then we get into my next favorite and most favorite things to read in the fall and that is oh I forgot another one of my paranormal wait a minute wait a minute so also for that we have um Halfway to the Grave which is the first book in the Night Hunter series by Janine Frost this one features Catherine or Cat Crawfield who is a half vampire and is taken upon herself to be a vampire hunter and she kind of has no idea what the crap she's doing she gets um she goes in to kind of take out this one big bad vampire but he's more or less playing with her he knows what she's doing from the get-go they can tell what she is and it's just you kind of get to see like her start off this journey of being vampire hunter and she sucks and bones the vampire she's hunting is like what the fuck were you even doing like i knew what you were doing i should kill you i should but instead he kind of takes her under a wing and they become a team and it's really sassy and snarky and just I love them so much and then Bones who um is the full-blooded vampire that she tries to take out in the initial one of this like their relationship is so fun to watch this is another one where there is a slow burn romance and it is the same throughout the entire series even though they do have their own battles but I really love this series a lot there are I can't remember how many books but there are also like a couple companion books 
that you need to read. They're like numbers like 3.5, that kind of a thing. But really, really good one. So that being said, one of my most favorite things to read in the fall is historical romances because all of my favorite ones are set in Scotland and there's just something about reading a book with a Scotch setting and once again sitting outside in that lovely fall breeze with hot tea, hot chocolate, hot cider, or hot toddy. So my absolute favorite author of said books is Julie Garwood. She writes my favorite historical romance novels of all time. She also writes contemporary but her historicals are way better. They're historically accurate. They feature like a little bit of historical intrigue a lot of the times like royal intrigue that kind of a thing like uprising that were taking place in like Norman and Saxon kind of interactions as well as Scot Scottish and English and it's just it just depends on which one you're reading but they take place in different levels different time eras kind of a deal but they do have a lot of accuracy which I really love but the romances in these are also just so ugh so amazing because there's always like that big gruff buff highlander and those are my favorite those are my favorite those are my favorite now kenley mcgregor is sherlyn kenyon sherlyn kenyon who writes the adult paranormal romance um dark hunter novels she um has a she has a pen name um kenley mcgregor under which she writes her historical novels now she does write historical romance novels claiming like claiming the Highlander Taming the Scotsman but she also writes historical paranormal romance novels like The Knights of Darkness and this is the book in the uh, Lords of Avalon series this one like has Morgan Le Fay in it like it's just they're really good I love her writing I love her writing her historical romance novels like just the regular ones are uh, what really makes her fabulous though is her unique take on paranormal aspects of stuff so I like hers because I like her romance but in hers in particular I will say read the paranormals first and then try this just flat out historical romance I will also say that fall is a perfect time for me since I'm in my paranormal kick um, I always use the fall to catch up on my supernatural this is my Dean Winchester Funko Pop I love it so supernatural I am behind but usually the fall is a good time to catch up specifically because the new season is always starting like October November so this is my Dean Comic Con he is in the Impala my Dean Comic Con Funko he does come out of there but what is really cool about this too is like look look wait the trunk of the Impala opens and I didn't know that and it's got a little devil trap and a demon hunting kit in there isn't that cool so at any rate also a good show to watch in the fall if you have not watched Sleepy Hollow. Oh my god, Sleepy Hollow is the best thing ever. And yeah, I know that's an abrupt ending, but that's all I got guys. So those are my fall recommendations. What are your favorite things to drink and read during the fall? Mine are hot toddies, like in particular even right now. I have spiked hot tea right here. Um, caramel apple spices from Starbucks. Ugg boots. Yep. I'm basic like that and my paranormal stuff so yep yeah, guys that is all I got let me know what your fall favorites are down below I will see you in the comments hopefully don't forget to get blah, blah, blah. don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe if you have not subscribed already I love you guys so much you're so freaking awesome I will see you in the next video bye